Sag Harbor is a very special place. This was just forest. There was nothing here before. Blacks moved here. This neighborhood was founded by African professionals, four African American professionals. You came out for the summer. It was an escape from all the chaos and confusion that was rampant in America at the time. And for successful African Americans to come out here and feel comfortable, this was an oasis. It was your typical resort town, except we were all black. And there were black folks just partying and listening to music and sunning. And I go, wow, that was magical. Coming out here for 30 years of my life, I've just seen how the neighborhoods change. In recent years, it has changed because America's changed. You want to sell money's money. You want to get the best, highest bid. They, they don't care what color you are. They just want to sell it. People are looking to buy everywhere. Why not here? Yeah. It's a great community. Some of the people have made the decision that, you know what, you know, the money's more important. Granted, we all need money. We also need our own little homeland. Living here in Sag Harbor, if you don't fight for what you believe, you'll lose everything you have. Sag Harbor, this is my spot. This is my place. My name is Bill Pickens, and we're in Sag Harbor at uh, my homestead called the Red House. In 1950, I stepped foot in this house when I was about 13 years old. This was about the 10th or 12th home in the entire community at that time. They were all dirt roads then, though. My parents came out because my dad was a New York lawyer, and he loved uh, boating, and he saw this water, he said, that's for me. And my brother and I came out, and in lieu of camp, this is where we came. We uh, had a great time. The, the attraction was, we could own it, uh, we could use it, we could uh, look forward to the future for our families and grandchildren to come out. Harbor was actually a whaling town. It was one of the first ports in New York. And eventually, in the 40s and 50s, blacks started coming out here and building very small cottages. They opened it up to African Americans because they couldn't sell it to anybody else. There were places they were not allowed to go. And when they found sort of their niche here in Sag Harbor, well, that was great because they were allowed to come here. They weren't going to be discriminated against here. So African-American families uh, told their friends, and, and so the word went out that, boy, come out here and you can buy a 10,000 square foot piece of land for, you know, a modest amount of money. When they saw this, they said, oh, gosh, this is going to be great. That was uh, pretty significant, that uh, African-Americans could own waterfront in America. Basically, the folks who settled out here were from Brooklyn, Jersey, uh, and a few people from Philadelphia. And the next thing you know, bang, bang, whole block would be purchased, uh, and houses began to be built. So it spread, and it was all African Americans, and uh, we had a great time. Celebrities came out here. For instance, in 1952, Langston Hughes came out here. He would come out and read poetry. Lena Horne came out. Harry Belafonte uh, built the home for his family uh, just up the road. Duke Ellington came out, rented a home down here. Colin Powell lived across the road. Colin's been coming out here since he was 12 or 13. Uh, this place has attracted uh, a lot of interesting people. And for successful African Americans to come out here and feel comfortable to be able to let their hair down to summer, this was an oasis. is an enclave of Long Island. It's a place where people have come for years to get away from New York City, but you still have a sophisticated, eclectic, diverse crowd of people. The Hamptons has always been pretty much an exclusive 
area. It's for the millionaires. Famous people live here, Calvin Klein, Ralph Lauren, Billy Joel. Sort of our Beverly Hills. When people think Hamptons, they think East Hampton and stuff you see on TV. People forget Sag Harbor actually is in the center of it all. Sag Harbor sits on the bay side. You've got the town of Sag Harbor, you've got the main street, and then there's African-American communities around that. You have Azure S, and then you have Sag Harbor Hills, and then you have Nineveh. We have sort of a one long beach that connects all of the communities. In these communities, they're very accomplished African-Americans. They're educators, they're doctors, they're writers, they're artists. It's really the creme de la creme of the community. Good boy, that's right. I'm B. Smith. And I'm Dan Gasby. How did we meet? Well, I was in the restaurant business, and this tall, dark, and handsome man came in. Woo! Who was that? You. Must have been another customer. <laughs> we came here because we wanted a second home. I didn't know this existed. I mean, I'm from Brooklyn. I mean, you know. Our idea of the summer was you sleep on a pallet because it's hot. That was summer. So to come out here, and there were black folks just partying and listening to music and sunning. That was what I always dreamed I wanted to, to live like. <laughs> My name is Michelle Arrington, and I'm from Brooklyn, New York. I started coming out here, I think I was 12 years old. This house was built in uh, 1978. My dad said, let's do a simple design. I want something modern. I want something airy. This became sort of the landmark house. My parents came here because they wanted something else for us. So 37 years ago, we built the house here. And um, we thought it would be a good place for the children to grow up because we wanted them to feel comfortable in their own skin, to feel proud of who they are. They wanted us to, you know, be in an environment where we could be safe, where we could play with other kids who were like us. I'm Judia Elmore Black. I am a certified sommelier. I'd like to dispel the myth of all of the Hamptons being just uber rich. I mean, we're not uber rich. We're very comfortable. I have two daughters, Danielle and Nicole. They're 15 and 11. So one of the main reasons I chose to live in this neighborhood is the proximity to the Sag Harbor community where there is a good concentration of African-American people. From a dating standpoint, you know, want them to have the option to at least know some black guys. I just don't want them to not be able to marry a black guy by default just because there are no black guys around, you know? I do kind of feel like it's now or never to get them into this place where they could be comfortable with their culture. Well, it was all African American from the get-go. Uh, but in recent years, it has changed because America's changed and uh, whites are moving in at, at uh, some pace. miss the camaraderie that I had here when everybody was the same, so to speak. It was, you know, all black families and all black kids. This is now, you know, 2014. People are mixing and melting, and, and that part of it I do like. Now we're coming down Hempstead. And we're going to turn into Azure S. I've been coming out my entire life, literally since I was in the womb. The property value has risen to the point now where this is a good bargain. People will come in and, 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 and buy. When I was growing up here, the only boats you really saw out there were uh, the occasional clam or scalloper. And now, as you can see, multi-million dollar yachts. They found us. We were hiding. <laughs> we had our own little Shangri-La. And now they're here. So, in time, I'm sure, 
with that kind of pressure, economic, things will change. And we can sell it off, but when it's gone, we wish you we didn't. That I can guarantee you. When I first visited Sag Harbor, I liked the fact that it was a small town. Uh, I liked the fact that people would nod their head at you or say hello to you as you're walking down the street. Sag Harbor was, for some people, an opportunity to live the good life and be able to get away so that they could recharge their batteries. That's what you do out here. As much as I love the house, and I love being here. I love being able to look out and seeing this. And so this beach and this community has a certain social significance to me because I've been there. I remember being denied the opportunity to go to a party at Colonial Country Club. I remember not being able to get into the New York Athletic Club. And that's why I bought here, because I never wanted my kids to have to worry about walking someplace where somebody's gonna tell them they didn't belong. These three communities, Azures, Sag Harbor Hills, and Nineveh are now part of the Hamptons. It's suddenly become a, a commodity. The thing I fear the most is that one day, by just economic circumstances, young black kids may not be able to walk down this beach and feel that they own a part of it and they lose their history. That's what I fear, that that will be lost. The fish fry over at the Eastfield Historical Society is an amazing gathering of the elders of the community with the kids in elementary school. They're lovely. Yeah, and they are in the camp program that we have here. It's important for young people to know that there's lineage and that there's history and that there's continuity. You have some remarkable people over the past 30 years who've attended. Doc, can I ask you a question? Yeah. I mean, you're 102 years old? 101. Hey, well, he, 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 we can round up. Yeah, 101. 12 month, third day, 12th year. What was it like being out here? How many years? 60 years. And I came from Harlem. Can you imagine coming from Harlem and then walking? Oh, the bustling crowd. Right. Coming into this quiet, beautiful green spot. A lot of friendly people. Growing right. I didn't know anything like this existed. It harkens back to a time when it was a small town and, you know, the, the, the matriarch or the patriarch, you know, goes, I know your father, I know your father's father, and your father's father was my friend. And, you know, there's nothing like a good poet. No, there isn't. Flower in a craned wall. I hold thee here in my hand, little flower. But if I knew what thou art all in all, I would know what God and man is. You're like Yoda. <laughs> to a mouse, to a lamb. <laughs> and you take my breath away. You seem to take my breath away. <laughs> How <are> you doing? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mom. You know, I was asking Dad some real estate stuff and trying to find out what we can do with this property up the street that I want to investigate. My father's a real estate broker. He started out in Brooklyn back in the 60s. People knew, you know, Earl Arrington is in the business of real estate. He can help us out. I am trying to follow in my dad's footsteps. My father has been perhaps my biggest advocate. He has been not just my father, but my teacher and my mentor. I like to think he's a bit of a visionary in some ways. I mean, even though he's in a rehab center and he's in the late stages of, of Parkinson's disease, I still pick up the phone and I call him and I say, Dad, I'm, I'm thinking about doing this or I heard about this. How do I do that? 
because that knowledge and insight about real estate is something you gather over a course of years. That looks kind of cool. I used to like this ride. This is one of my favorite rides. I'm going to go on that. That one? Okay, let's do that one. The carnival in Sag Harbor comes the first weekend in August and has been that way, I don't know, probably before I even started coming out here at 12. How many tickets for this one? Carissa, hold I mommy's like hand. I will. Okay, you ready to rock it? Ready! It's funny now, as a parent, to take my daughter to the same rides that I rode on and to see the excitement in her face. Look, oh, look, look, look. One of the things that you see in this particular community are the moms and dads are still together. This was like the, the big event for town. Wow. The family unit is very intact here. It's a very important part of creating that stability for the next generation. That's the common cord of all of the families out here. over there and you know switch it off like maybe move that more over where the other seating is we're inviting people from the Sag Harbor community over for a brunch and wine tasting and cocktails let's see how many we have we have just enough for the round tables then the bar needs some flowers we're just doing a little informal past brunchy hors d'oeuvres and wines that are paired with the hors d'oeuvres let's see oh yeah these do the Bordeaux's it was a really great vintage and then I have some Italian ones. This is kind of like my debut to Sag Harbor. I, I'm really nervous that if it goes wrong, I don't get another chance. Yeah. Hi, B. How are you? Good, Good to see you. You, you look beautiful. I gotta go to the ladies first. Well, you should. Okay. I'm Judy. Hi, nice to see you. Nice to see you. <laughs> <laughs> one, look at you. Look at how big she is. She was swimming. Oh, hey, oh, love the look. Good to see you, baby. How's you, how you doing? You let him draw. My husband's family is, he's actually, they're from Bermuda, but he's given me permission. Well, I'd like to move to, uh, like, Myrtle Beach, South Sag Carolina. Harbor. You don't want to come to Sag <laughs> Harbor? Oh, I'm trying to, I mean, I'm trying, why, why would you want I'm Myrtle Beach? I'm trying to get away from the taxes. Oh, my God. No, it's All not I know way. is I need a pool in the back. But you can I'm have that here. That might be a I'm challenge for me to convince my husband to go well, this way instead of go that way. But you know, well, you know what? what? Think about yeah. it. Come take a drive around. Take yeah. a look. See, yep. see. Get a, you know, come over to our house. Okay, got it here. I have to get your information. Yes, please do. Absolutely. Please do. It's, uh, you know, it's a fun thing, the wine piece. But I always like to start with the food, and then I pick the wine. And then you go, to go with the food. Yeah, because well, people want, want variety, and but they want to learn also. I was in the restaurant business, and it was always important to really please the people who came in, and then they always came back, right. you know? And if they want to tell other people, oh, we had this fabulous meal, and the wine was wonderful. And, well, I'm so happy that you're here. You're really, you know, a model for me in more ways than one. Good. And it's nice to have you with us. You know what? We all have had somebody before us who helped us to get to where we are today. I'd like to talk to you some more about that. Okay, we yeah. should. It's really great to have B. Smith here and have a chance to spend some time with her. I feel like we formed a deeper bond today that I'd like to continue. We can all go to events where we know everyone all the time, but it's really fun when you can make a new friend. I'm happy. I feel like success. Come on in, boys. 
Well, Bishop, we've got some people coming. Candace. Great to see you. Good Thank you for you. having us. We have a, a lovely young couple just married recently, a guy named Hank, I call him the Hankster, and his lovely wife, Candace. Hello, who's that? And then a dear friend of ours, Ron, who's like a brother to me. And so it's gonna be the six of us and we're gonna have a we're gonna have a good time. <laughs> Hello. I haven't seen you guys since the wedding. Yes, how about everything? Oh, how are you doing? Good. I didn't tell Ron you guys were coming and you didn't know, but you go, you know each other. Blacks in the Hamptons. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's only about a few of us out here, you know. Uh, <laughs> but, you know sweetie's working on a little cocktail. <laughs> we're going to make this like a martini. We're going to call this a hard rock martini. It's a party. <laughs> we don't get to do this every day. Well, Cheers. Cheers. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. You guys, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm so glad that we have all of you here. We're happy to be here. Pleasure. And you look beautiful. Oh, oh, this looks amazing. Let's dig in. Oh, wow. Okay. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> We know you, we know you. We didn't know you know them, we didn't know them know you. <laughs> and at the same time, being successful and being African American, we all share a common bond. We live in the best of times and we live in the most challenging of times. And that goes back to even living here in Sag Harbor. It has changed, you know, we came out here Memorial Day and it looked different. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it, in some ways, it's good. It shows like, growth and aggression from what it was. In some ways, it's sad. Yeah. If you don't fight for what you believe, you'll lose everything you have. I think today what I want to do is see what's out there. estate salesperson now in Brooklyn. I am also an owner and I rent my property here in Sac Harbor. I mean, maybe when we're out today, we might bump into people who are potentially interested in selling. Okay, cool. I think we got a plan. Let's yep. go. I realize there are families that are looking to have the experience, I guess, that I had as a kid. And so I thought, well, gee, my dad's doing it out here. I should just do the same thing. There's one I have in mind. Your dad originally sold this. Can we sell this? This whole lot. Look at all the for sale signs over here. I think in terms of real estate here in Sac Harbor, many of the homes have been passed down from grandparents to parents to children. And what has happened in that transfer is some of the children didn't come out here. And so the properties, they've been paid for in full, but they're not in the homes and so the homes have become run down it's not about the house it's not about the cottage that was built in 1950s it's about the land it's about location 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 you're close to the beach you're a 10 minute walk to the town you're 15 minutes to the ocean so there's a demand for it my hope as a broker is to obtain those properties and be able to sell them this is a fun house as a party house they were from Brooklyn originally. Mm -hmm. They knew my dad when he had his office. I mean, I know there's some issues with it. Mm -hmm. That moss and newspapers, nobody's been here. You peek in there? I can see through the doorknob. And I remember this house. This was like the hangout house. This is for my sister's group, you know. It's kind of sad to see this house in this condition. You want to see if we can go around the side? Mm -hmm. This is how it is. So it's four bedrooms, two baths. That's what people are looking for. I mean, it would be nice to get a family in here. Oh, this is a good one. This area has always been a community-based area. Um, just the way the homes are constructed. There are more cottages than big homes. They're not, you know, 40-acre farms. You're away from anyone. 
no matter what you do. It's designed so that you could ride your bike up and down the street and pick up the local kids or go to someone's pool and enjoy those experiences. This was like the spooky house, I think, a little bit when we were kids, because it's an old house. Because, I mean, no one's been over here in years. The house is probably not as valuable as the land. Definitely not. I mean, it's a teardown, but if we could track down the owner, I mean, somebody's paying property tax on it. It's gotta be. Things change, people change, time changes. And so this community is going to change as a result. That's just the, the ebb and flow of life. I think that's a good one because uh, it's been sitting for so long i would love for this neighborhood to stay the same and when i say stay the same i don't mean necessarily all black i mean community so we're very lucky that they let us have a pool it's quite small but it's there nevertheless we just moved in um this summer so we haven't been here a full summer season yet. Well, it's not finished. So here is Janice's house, the woman we bought the land from. So this was a piece of land and it was in her family forever. And this is obviously the best part of this house because we get to wake up every day to this. You can't beat it. Waking up here in the morning, I think that's the best part of it all. It's We've been out in the Hamptons for years, right. and we found this, and we were like, this is unbelievable. It's an African-American community, and you didn't know even when you, after you bought the land. He did not know. <laughs> he did not. He owned this land and did not know. And I was like, I don't, how, can we, are we allowed to be here? It was weird for the first time to feel like, oh my God, are we going to be accepted as like the reverse situation? And some people have said, like, oh, I don't think they'll sell it to somebody who's white. And I'm like, I don't believe that. I can't imagine that. But maybe. Who knows? But we didn't have any issue. We yeah, have a great I... relationship with, with the woman who sold the house to us. When you want to sell money's money, you want to get the best, highest bidder. They, they don't care what color you are. They just want to sell it. When I grew up here, this was all dirt roads. My family at one point owned this entire corner. So, this was my grandmother's house. And then when we got older, my parents built the house next door. But this was it. This was kind of affectionately known as Weber's Corner here. It's, it's up to me now. My grandmother, she can't manage it on her own. So it's been passed on to me just by virtue of, uh, you know, my grandmother, you know, you know, being 101 years old. We are in a, a transition of, from one generation to another. It's grandma's house. All our tchotchkes are here. That's up me and grandma. This is the struggle, the, the dilemma. As the generations move forward, you acquire these properties, and then you have to ask yourself, how important is this property to you? That's really the dilemma. Does it have enough significance to maintain and keep it? And in my particular case, you know, I'm not some private equity guy. I'm just a, a hard-working sales executive, and I'm out there trying to do my best. So to keep a property like this is, is a struggle. I've made that the, the, the determination in my life that this property is to stay in our family. I'll fight tooth and nail to keep it. What made you bring your boat to the Sac Harbor, Chief? I, I've been boating out here my whole life. I got it from my daddy. Your daddy was in Sac Harbor as well? My daddy, my daddy was boating out here with his father. Somewhere out here is my piece of paradise. It's just my little slice. My dad was fishing, a motorboat guy. His fishing. father was a Party sailboat guy. Oh, really? Yeah. They've been out here forever. I get a little piece, and this is it. All right, let's do this. I still have all my friends that I grew up with here. <laughs> and, and that it is. <laughs> Salud, everybody. Cheers. It's almost over. Our grandfathers hung out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Our fathers hung out. And, and now we're hanging out. Lord, hear our prayer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, that's going back. That goes back to the dirt roads. Remember riding your bike down them hills? That's, what I'm talking about. That's how we learned how to ride bikes. I had a little huffy, and I could not get away from that dog. I hated going by. It is changing because we built a great community. And that's why they want to buy in. They're not trying to buy into the community. They're, just, they're, they're trying yeah. to buy property. We're not sitting here saying we, we don't like white people. You know, or we got to protect our own. What we're saying is... We like people that think like us, and it don't matter what you are. Because if you're just looking at, at this as an asset, then yeah, you sell to the highest bidder. But if it means something more to you, the consequences of that may mean that you can't treat it like an asset. My family built that house in 1947. Wow. It's never going to go anywhere. Nope. It's going to get handed down for generation, generation, generation. I may reach that point sometime in life. If I get, you know, I, if something happens to me and I need money, part of the interview process, if I ever had to sell, would be about making sure that whoever's coming in wants to be a part of the community. The friends around the table are worth three generations deep. Yeah, that's special. Starting the fourth. Here, 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 here. This is our place. We're all going to be here because we're not selling out. We'll die together. Buy up this baby of you. So good to be out here on the weekends. Art grill. I was up one night just surfing the websites. Just looked at the pictures of the house, the proximity to the beach, and it was in our price point. And I was like, I think I found our beach house. And literally that day, uh, we were at the house. We saw the beach, and Kim was like, I love it. I was sold. It was <laughs> over. This is. But. <laughs> Here you go. Oh, thank you. Uh, John Carrington and his wife live next door to us. Um, and they have their daughters and sons that come out. Yeah, and their grandkids we all come out. We run into a couple of weekends a year. Your house next door, you built in what year? We built that house in 1967. Okay. If you were a black family in the, what, the 50s and 60s, and you wanted to build a beach house for your family, this is where you would have gone? Yeah, there weren't many places where you could buy. You know, you, there were some restrictions. There was no restriction on this. <laughs> this house had been on the market for a while. I think the way it was decorated, it still felt like 1972 in here mm -hmm. with green shag carpeting okay, and everything. Yeah, People yeah. couldn't overlook. The, couldn't the, see the possibilities yeah. of the house. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Sag yeah. Harbor is a charming place. You know, it it's, is. It's, uh, we're now living in a different kind of world where you'll find people who come from all over the world. We're allowed to live in this neighborhood because it is a traditionally African-American neighborhood and Anthony is African because he's from South Africa. That's right, he's got born and raised. <laughs> yeah, well, we're very glad to have both of you as our neighbors. <laughs> Thank you. We participate in the neighborhood. We, we tell our friends about the neighborhood, but we don't go out there advertising it because we actually like the way the neighborhood is now. We really don't want fences and walls up between everybody and, uh, and having these perfect little gardens and stuff like that. We like the way this is. It's just, it's just, uh, there's nothing on steroids here. It's very human. Oh, bon appetit. Enjoy. Bon appetit. What do you know about the history of this neighborhood? There was a man by the name of Lynch, I think, who bought this whole area in here for about $25,000. Wow. And when was that? That was back in 19, in the 1940s. Okay. And a lot like this would cost you about $500. Wait, is that how much you bought your lot for? Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. This took too long to happen. <laughs> <laughs> This couple, I believe, is interested in selling. Nice lot. It's and very nice. Would and they be in the range? That might be in the range. This is beachfront right here. Oh, yes. Beautiful views. It's a little nostalgic for me because I know all of these houses. Oh, I bet. I, bet. <laughs> I know all of the people yes. who live yes. in them. I don't know the addresses, but I know the families. Right. But a lot of history here and a lot of friendships that have been forged Michelle is phenomenal. She's sincere in her commitment to seeing us along this journey. Have the 13-year-old and the 10-year-old. Mm -hmm. They can 
actually walk to town themselves, right? Exactly. I want to make sure we act and do this while our kids are still young. I think that there's a community feel here of African Americans that they need to be a part of. The kids kind of do this house hopping and it frees up at least one parent. So one parent's watching all the kids one day and the other parents are out having cocktails at no, night. No, alternate. Oh, yes, I like that. That's I like that. Fun. Okay, okay. No, it's I'm good. You will, you will have great friendships. Okay. I think Lori and her family are wonderful candidates for this community because they have young children. Yeah, this is a community of families, you know, where everything sort of revolves around the children and, and the parents and the social component to it that is open to everyone. People who are looking for that would love to live here. At the end of the day, I think that that's what Sag Harbor provides. Oh, man, that is terrific. What type of seasoning is that? The Red House is just an oasis of relaxation. I, my dad just <laughs> bought me a moped <laughs> that he got from when? Tonight, this is the a celebration of the end of the season. The young people go back to school. Families get together for sort of the last hurrah of the summer. Oh, hey, Tim, my friend. Oh, my brother. Good to see you. Yeah. Oh, my God. Mm. You're three years old than me, but you got more hair <laughs> And so uh, that, that, that makes me upset. In a few days, I'm 78 years old. So well, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm standing. You know I'm, what? I'm still standing. It's hey, a look. beautiful thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have some movies. My father took 8 millimeter pictures and stored away so that his children and grandchildren could someday see what Sag Harbor was back in its early days. Oh, wow. Frolicking the sand. Oh my god. Isn't that great? It's so Oh wow. Wow. This is great family fun. Oh, look at your little naked booty. <laughs> we caught him. We caught him. <laughs> Bottoms up. <laughs> It's wonderful for the young people to see these pictures because it represents their history through their families and what they were able to do in the 40s and 50s against some great odds in this society. So I think it, it gets a, a very fine vision of the depth and commitment of their parents and grandparents to ensuring that Sag Harbor Hills would live today. This is a, a, a love story. We love Sag Harbor. When I see young African-American boys and girls, little kids running on the beach playing, they're not in the projects. They're not thinking about whether or not they've got to duck and run because they hear gunshots. It makes me feel proud to know that we, we have a, a piece of this, this dream called America. And I'm proud of that. I'm proud of Sag Harbor. This place represents freedom. It represents not having to compromise or having to second guess, that's what this place represents to me. And I'll do whatever I have to do to keep it. I'm fine with anyone moving to this neighborhood. You can move wherever, but as long as you encompass yourself into the community. My hope is that people also will come in and be a part of what's, what's happened here over the years. Their kids will play with our kids, you know, it will be an intermingling. The culture here is family-oriented to enrich our souls and our minds.